This is Indianapolis Raceway Park, Labor Day. Record-breaking crowds have gathered here for the final day of the U.S. Nationals. Winning this week-long event is not only an important step toward the World Championship title, but for the top fuel dragsters, the U.S. Nationals is traditionally the most important race of the year. The crowds have seen the number of competitors reduced to four in a series of six-second duels. Now, they gather for the third round of competition on this, the final day. Hi, I'm Dave Bowman, and as you can see, the stands are full, and despite the heat, they're all anxiously awaiting the battle of the top fuel dragsters, and this is really the ultimate in a drag racing machine. Today, Joe Amato and his team face a major challenge. This race is crucial in the points contest that may decide their second consecutive world championship. You know, behind all the smoke and noise of Joe's dragster, there's a group of dedicated people that we call the hit heroes. The Amato team is a very special group that has breathed that rarefied air of a world championship and won't settle for less. Crew chief Tim Richard, the quiet, steady professional known as the general, directs the team. As crew member Jerry Amato, Joe's wife, helps stage the car, the rest of the crew anxiously watch. Jeff Rogers, who works on the clutch and underneath the car, and the outspoken Wayne Cannon, who specializes on the right side of the engine, waits silently. Dick Moore, the tire man. Jimmy Walsh, the utility man. And the chief, Joe Ravillo, Jerry's father, who assembles the car. All position themselves for the start. This season has not been easy for the team. They've had problems. But so far, this weekend is different. This may be the weekend. Earlier today, at the opening ceremonies, they received a bonus check as the number one qualifier, the car with the lowest elapsed time. But each member of the team knew the hardest moments lay ahead. Even as they smiled for the photographers, they knew eventually they would have to beat the man who had qualified with the fastest speed, Big Daddy. Big Daddy Don Garland has faced Richards and the Amato team in five races so far this season, but the Amato team has beat him only once. Despite being handicapped with mechanical problems, they've held their own in the points race, running second to Garlitz with a little over a thousand points between them. Today, each having defeated two other contenders, Garlitz and Amato now face each other for the inevitable showdown. Watching the staging lights, the tension shows in Tim Richards' face. He's done all he possibly can. Will it be enough? are on the starting line. As thousands wait for them to take the green light, only a few are thinking of the five days of grueling hard work it's taken them to reach this point. Long before the crowds arrived, from the moment they unloaded the car, the team was prepared to meet the challenge. Everyone on the team reflects the enthusiasm of Joe Amato. Joe not only drives the car, but he owns the team as well. He's handpicked the crew members, and he treats them all like family. This team has been together a long time, quite unusual in professional racing. You have to have a good crew chief and a good crew, and that's what makes a successful racing team. You know, the driver gets all the glory and he's on the limelight, but the people behind the scenes, they're really the ones that, uh, they're the hidden heroes, so to speak, because you have to have the faith and the trust, and because my life is in their hands, basically. If any one of them makes a mistake, you know, it could cost me my life. The most important member of the team is the crew chief. Tim Richards, he's a woman since I started uh, racing nationally, we came from the beginning and he's uh, the crew chief and he does all the engine building and the tuning and everything and he's a, a person who doesn't leave any stone unturned or any uh, any bridge uncrossed in his quest for perfection and it shows up in the caliber of the engine work and uh, you know our our record you know being the first to do a lot of things is all due to him basically we strive to have everybody know their job and not to have to be told that what to do. I mean, that's that's important for us because you never know uh, when you get into the race what's going to happen. Uh, I might wind up doing somebody else's job and they might wind up doing my job. And we want everybody to know everybody's job. Tim Richards is a specialist in supercharged nitro burning engines. He has a special relationship with a motto. At the track, Tim runs the team. 
He taught his crew a systematic approach that's important because these men regularly have to rebuild an engine in only a few hours, a job that normally takes days. Every job is important, from inflating the tires to tuning the engine, packing the parachute and mixing the fuel. Saturday morning, after practice on Thursday and one qualifying run on Friday, they roll the car out for the first qualifying round of the day. The car runs beautifully. Slicing through the quarter mile in 5.50 seconds, Jerry and the crew are ecstatic because this makes them the top qualifier. Each run brings the engine to the edge of destruction. The crew must tear the engine completely down and analyze each part to find that elusive combination between the fuel system, clutch, and blower. One good run is not enough. Because of the elimination style of drag racing, being consistent is the key to winning. One of the dirtiest jobs on the crew is the diver, the guy who drops the oil pan and removes the connecting rod cap. Jeff Rogers, he only worked for me two years now, and he never was with any other team, but. He started and we taught him how to do the clutch, taught him how to do the bottom end of the motor. He's been a you know, precision person. He hasn't really made any uh, mistakes in the two years that he's been with us, which is uh, really a lot to say for someone because it's always easy to make a mistake under the heat of the battle or the pressure of, uh, of racing. The top of the engine is divided between Richards and Wayne Cannon. Here's a guy who really loves racing. He's a longtime member of the crew but can only work on the weekends. I take care of mostly the right side of the car. Once we get it back and we get it jacked up, I try and keep track of what's going on to make sure that when it goes back together, everything was done right, because Timmy's busy trying to concentrate on what he's doing, what, what adjustments to make for the next run, or checking to make sure the pistons are all all right. So it's my job to make sure things are clean, in order, and it, you know it's ready to go back together. I have a real good deal here. I get to do what I want on the weekends, which yeah. is go racing, and I still have a regular job doing it. Where do you normally work? With the I work uh, for General Motors in uh, Linden. It's an assembly plant. So I, I go back to work to rest up after the weekend. And the tough weekend it is, too. The various manufacturers reps stop by offering their technical assistance, such as reading the spark plug, to analyze the performance of Joe's engine. And then there's the old friends who visit and competitors who stop by to take a look. Sometimes they're one and the same, like Connie Coletta. He goes around and he follows what you do with your car, and he learns by your car. In other words, he follows your motor combination, your tune-up, and he sees what the results are. So by doing that, it's like having more than one car. You know, there's no secrets, really, in the sport, but it's nice to have that camaraderie with the different uh, people because if we're in trouble we need a motor or a blower we go right over there and get it and he'll do the same thing so you know it's it's a good uh, friendly uh, battle here for a championship or a race when he comes over are you doing anything to you know maybe leave the valve cover on a little bit longer uh, or cover the spark plugs or no nah, he's liable to grab the wrench and start taking the spark plugs out so no nah, we're not we're not trying to hide he's not that. embarrassed for going ahead and no, he's what he not embarrassed to he's been around too long he's a hell of a nice guy though. Yeah. Only four hours after the morning run, the engine rebuilt and the car back together, they move on to the staging lane. Tim and Joe compare notes one last time. As Joe moves the 2,500 horsepower fueler onto the starting line, each crew member makes a final check. Wayne examines the engine for any fluid leaks. This is qualifying. They're again racing the clock and looking to duplicate their best run, not racing the guy in the next lane. Joe's reaction time is fast. The run is good, 5.53 seconds, almost as fast as the morning session. The crew is unemotional because even on a fast run, their trained eyes spot problems. It didn't leave as well. No, it didn't leave. Oh, it was I too hot. You did what? I, I, mean, I had to bring the motor up. Did you, did you have him put the sti static down? No. Because I, I, you know, see how long it took me to put the light on? I was trying. Yeah. But it wouldn't make the car move. Well, the car was moving. It had to go a long way to get in the second lane. Is that light. what it was? Yeah. It was moving. It but was moving. Running, the the light must be separated a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just seemed like I, I, I... Back in the pit, the engine is torn down to discover the problem. The number four piston is scuffed. 
which could be the symptom of something very serious. Early Sunday morning, the crew is already working on the car as die-hard fans gather around. By 8 a.m., a new clutch will be installed. Tim has decided to use the first qualifying run to break it in for tomorrow's elimination rounds. At the same time, qualifying strategy is being discussed by Joe and Connie Coletta. The objective? How to beat Big Daddy. You gotta get on the same side of the I mean, team. listen, listen. Neither one of us has got a chance to shot at it. You do, okay? But I'm I, don't, I don't if he gets runner up if I win. That's what I'm He's saying. He's gotta go out early. Right, that's it. In other words, the only chance that you and I and Mullins have got a shot at this championship in this game right now is to put him out in the first with the second. Yeah, I haven't been running good enough to do what you're doing. Well, you're 50. But I didn't have a 50 before I did. Then, during the engine warm-up, the oil pressure suddenly drops. Joe immediately kills the engine. Tim suspects the oil pump. Precious minutes are wasted as the entire oil system is checked and a new pump is installed. They can't afford to miss this round if they expect to beat Big Daddy. Within a few minutes, the crew has the car on the track and Jerry is helping Joe stage the car. Jerry works as hard as any member of the team. She's been with me since the beginning. Uh, she really actually gets her hands dirty, and she gets right in there and mixes the nitro, packs the parachute, backs the car up on the starting line, does all the hotel bookings, airline reservations, and keeps us all fed and, and food. So she's pretty active in the team. Packing the parachute and mixing the highly explosive nitromethane fuel are two of the most critical jobs on the team but no more important than the support Jerry gives Joe before each run. The team watches intently to see what can be learned as Joe makes his qualifying run. But not much will be learned from this run because of that variable, the new clutch. Between rounds, in the trailer, Tim adjusts the fuel system, searching for that elusive combination of blower and fuel system that makes what he does more of an art than a science. Meanwhile, Big Daddy prepares for his second run of the day, his last chance to grab the top qualifying position from Joe. As the cars roll toward the starting line, Everyone knows this is the last chance to test before the first elimination round tomorrow. Tim carefully watches for the changing track conditions and the final qualifying results that will determine the order of racing. Fifty-one, he got in between it. See, that puts uh, Garlic's third. With the order of racing for tomorrow determined, Tim turns his attention to their last opportunity to test the car. The engines are revved. Joe makes a false start. This could be serious. What would happen is Joe screwed up on the line. Uh, it's as simple as that. There's no easy way to put it, okay? So he had a backup. They should have, shouldn't have even given us the run. Okay, that made the motor just that little bit hotter. Okay, in return, that made it a little leaner when he left the line, and we think or we hope that that is what caused most of the damage on the run and the reason it didn't run any faster. Uh, whether we're right or not, we probably won't know until tomorrow morning. Well, we had planned to leave the line somewhere around between 150 and 160 degrees and uh, of course he left the line a little too early and then he backed up and had to wait for snow to clear the track the traps and uh, by that time the engine was way too hot when it gets too hot it gets a little too lean it gets a little too lean and it doesn't leave the line the way it should so we really it was almost a wasted run we didn't learn a thing on the run really uh, the mixture of the 
fuel on the line is very important to how the car gets off the line, really. Once again, the methodical engine drill takes place. But this time, the aggravation of serious engine damage is surpassed only by the frustration of having lost that last opportunity to test their race day setup and find out if they have regained their previous level of performance. Well, we're going to do whatever it takes to make this thing 100% physically right. You know what I mean? It's, it, there's no compromise on that. The car has to be right by the time we leave here tonight. So That's it could be a late night then, right? Oh, yeah, it could be. <laughs> and probably will. Those little nicks on the top of the piston tell the tale of a severely damaged engine that will keep them up most of the night in preparation for the big Labor Day race. It's Monday, and it's Labor Day, a record-breaking crowd show for the 31st Annual U.S. National. Amid the festivities, the Amato team is concerned, because yesterday they learned nothing from their runs and can only hope that they have regained the level of performance they had on Saturday when they set the low ET. Today, there will be no second chance. Anxiety runs high. Psychologically, this is the hardest run. If they win the first round, they can get on with business as usual, preparing for the tougher next three rounds. The first round won't be easy for another reason. They're paired with former two-time world champ, Gary Beck. They leave together, running side by side all the way. With a final burst of power, Joe wins by a wheel. With a look of relief on their faces, Tim and Jerry and the rest of the crew head back to the pits to prepare for the next round. On race day, with twice as many rounds to run, there's even less time, only an hour and a half, to completely overhaul the engine, repair the car, and return to competition. It's the second round. Foxy old Connie Coletta gets his wish. He's going to run Big Daddy. Knowing they will have to race the winner of this round, Tim watches to see which is the faster lane. It's a close race. Garlitz wins and advances to the next round of the competition. Big Daddy's win confirms for Tim that the right lane is the faster of the two and that they will meet Big Daddy in the next round. But first, Joe must drive the car to another victory. Tim runs to the staging lane to check the surface of the track before Joe does his burnout. In order to face Garlitz, Joe has to beat Gene Snow. It's a very close start. But Snow gets loose. Joe drives on to a sure win. In preparation for the next round, while the crew will overhaul the engine, Tim changes the fuel pump and makes an adjustment to get more power on the top end. The crew works methodically as the tension shows in Joe's eyes. On the line as Joe suits up, he watches the one man arrive who stands between him and a second world championship, Big Daddy. Don is a, he's a cagey old veteran and he's pretty smart. You have to go up there with the idea of uh, just racing yourself, running your own race and not letting the, the hype of running Big Daddy, quote, you know, get you. Meanwhile, Tim is on the starting line inspecting the surface to find the best spot to position the car for the start. The black art of building and tuning a racing engine so powerful it literally cannot be accurately measured on a dyno is now reduced to watching one man drive five days of work down a quarter mile in less than six seconds. Even for the reserve, Tim Richards, this is an emotional moment. In order to beat Amato, Garlitz turned the fastest speed of the event. Joe drove a perfect race, and the car performed flawlessly. They were simply outrun. It seemed like I thought we were even in low gear, and about the top of low gear, did this rattle the tires made or something? No. It seemed like at the top of low gear, he moved about like that. I didn't push the button till then, in the second gear. And then, and then we went down all the way down just like that. For Tim, 
the race is never really over. There are too many questions left unanswered despite the fact they've had one of the best weekends of the year. They've solved the blower problems and the fuel problems that plagued them during the first part of the season and have reestablished that consistency of performance that had made them world champions. But nothing can take away the frustration of not winning. Well, our performance uh, on a whole for this particular race was, was pretty good. Uh, it's got to be consistent, but it's not consistent at the time I want it. Uh, I, I'm just uh, disappointed we couldn't have given him the power when he needed it. It seems like we're having a hard time making the car step up when it really has to be. You know, I mean, it, uh, sometimes you can just turn the power on when you want it, sometimes you can't. There's some kind of little gremlin in there we're just not putting our fingers on. It. Well, we're all disappointed about today because naturally we wanted to win. But we feel a little better about the car because it's performing better, it's run more consistent, and you just need to find a few more problems and we'll be right on top again. You know, it, it's, it's mentally a downer, but you have to, you know, keep your, your shiny side up and uh, come here and put the car away and go home and, you know, Monday morning go to work and get it ready for next time because that's how racing is. Thank God there's always next week and you get another chance. This unshakable optimism keeps race teams returning to beat the odds for victory. For the Hidden Heroes of the Amato team, I'm Dave Bowman.